In this tutorial, we'll dive into Network Address Translation, or NAT, and its two main categories, SourceNAT and DestinationNAT. We'll cover the various forms of SourceNAT, including Static NAT, Dynamic NAT, and Port Address Translation. Throughout the tutorial, we'll also learn how to configure and apply these NAT types in real-world scenarios. Network Address Translation is a networking technique that allows devices in a private network to communicate with external networks like the Internet, by translating private IPs to public ones. NAT works in two directions. Source NAT where internal devices initiate communication and destination NAT where external users access internal services. This enables multiple devices to share a limited number of public IPs and enhancing security by hiding internal network structures. As mentioned earlier, there are two main types of NAT based on the direction of translation. SourceNet is initiated from the internal network when devices want to communicate with external networks, while DestinationNet is initiated from the external network when external users seek to access internal resources. SourceNet modifies the source IP address, changing it from internal to external, whereas DestinationNet modifies the destination IP address, changing it from external to internal. The primary purpose of SourceNet is to enable internal devices to access external networks while destination at allows external users to reach specific internal services. In terms of security, SourceNet helps to conceal internal IP addresses from the external network, providing an additional layer of security, whereas destination at can expose certain internal services to the outside world, necessitating stringent security measures. SourceNet is typically implemented on routers and firewalls, whereas destination at is often used in load balancers or for specific service access. Common implementations of SourceNAT include static NAT, dynamic NAT, and port address translation, while destination NAT commonly involves port forwarding. At this point, we will take a closer look at the various types of SourceNAT. Let's consider a scenario with three companies, each operating its own private internal network. Each company has an edge router connected to a shared router, which simulates the internet. Company A uses static NAT, allowing its internal devices to access external services with a consistent public IP address. Company B implements dynamic NAT, mapping a pool of private IPs to a pool of public IPs on a first-come, first-served basis. Company C adopts port address translation, where multiple internal devices share a single public IP distinguished by unique port numbers. Let's start by exploring and configuring static NAT. Static NAT establishes a one-to-one -one mapping between one private IP address and one public IP address. It is ideal for services that require a fixed IP for outbound or inbound traffic, such as web hosting, email servers, or remote access via VPN. However, since each internal device in Static NAT requires its own public IP, it becomes inefficient in environments where multiple devices need external access, but only a limited number of public IPs are available. Another key aspect of proper NAT configuration is accurately defining the inside interface, which connects to the private network, and the outside interface, which links to the external or public network. Furthermore, understanding the following four NAT-related keywords is essential for successful implementation. Inside local address is the original private IP address of the device inside the network. Inside global address is the translated public IP address that represents the internal device on the external network. Outside local address is the address of the external destination from the perspective of the internal network. Usually, it's the same as the outside global address, which is the real public IP address of the external destination but can differ in cases of IP conflicts, security measures, or specific routing policies. IP conflicts occur when internal and external networks use the same IP address range. NAT can resolve these conflicts by translating the outside global IP to a different outside local IP for internal use, ensuring there is no overlap. Moreover, to enhance security, NAT can hide the true public IP of external servers by translating the outside global address to a different outside local address. This prevents the real IP from being exposed to internal users. Lastly, in the context of VPNs where two networks have overlapping private IP ranges, NAT can resolve conflicts by translating the outside global IP to a different outside local IP, avoiding IP conflicts between the two networks. 
Now let's see the static NAT configuration on Cisco router. Here we are configuring the internal facing interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 with the IP address 192.168.1.1 as the gateway for internal devices. The command IP NAT inside designates this interface as the inside interface for NAT, where traffic will originate from the private network. Next, we configure the external facing interface Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 with the public IP address 200.1.1.1. The command IP NAT outside marks this as the outside interface, meaning it represents the public facing side where traffic exits and enters the network. Subsequently, this command sets up static NAT. With this configuration, when a device inside the private network with the private IP 192.168.1.20 initiates an outgoing connection, static NAT maps its private IP to a fixed pre-assigned public IP 200.1.1.10. Also, incoming traffic from external networks is directed to the internal device based on the permanent public to private IP mapping, ensuring consistent and predictable access to services within the network. Next, we dive into the concept of Dynamic NAT and its functionality. Dynamic NAT maps a pool of private IP addresses to a pool of public IP addresses on a first come, first serve basis making it ideal for scenarios where not all devices need simultaneous internet access, such as a small office network periodically accessing cloud services. The temporary private to public IP mappings ensure efficient use of available IP addresses, but the limitation is that devices do not maintain a consistent public IP, making them unreachable from external networks. Now let's take a look at the dynamic NAT configuration on a Cisco router. First, the inside and outside interfaces are configured the same as in the previous example. Then, we create a pool of public IP addresses called public pool, which includes a range from 200.1.2.10 to 200.1.2.20. These IPs will be dynamically assigned to internal devices as they access the internet, allowing multiple devices within the internal network to share these public IPs. Next, an access control list is used to specify which internal traffic should be translated by NAT. In this case, the ACL permits all traffic from the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network for translation. Finally, we bind the ACL to the NAT pool. This ensures that all traffic matching the ACL will have its source IP addresses dynamically translated to one of the public IPs from the public pool when accessing external networks. By this configuration, when a device within the private network initiates an outgoing connection, Dynamic NAT temporarily assigns a public IP address from a pool of available addresses to the internal private IP. The NAT device dynamically creates a session-specific mapping, storing both the internal private IP and the temporarily assigned public IP in a translation table. Once the session ends, the public IP is released back into the pool, making incoming traffic only possible while the session is active, as there is no fixed mapping between public and private IP addresses. Finally, let's explore port address translation functionality, also known as NAT overload. Port address translation refers to the process of mapping or translating the internal source port of a device in a private network to an external port on a public IP address when using network address translation. This mapping allows multiple devices within the same private network to share a single public IP address for communication with external networks, like the Internet. A key limitation of PAT is that it cannot be used when external users need to initiate connections to specific internal devices, as the port mappings are dynamic. Regarding configuration, after properly setting up the inside and outside interfaces to define the private and public network boundaries, the access control list specifies which traffic from the internal network will be translated by NAT. In this case, we permit all traffic originating from the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network to be subject to NAT. Finally, this command configures port address translation. The overload keyword enables multiple internal devices to share a single public IP by assigning unique port numbers to each connection. In this case, the IP on Gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 is shared among the devices, enabling many devices on the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network 
to access the internet simultaneously using the same public IP address. Consequently, the source port and IP of the internal device is translated to a unique combination of the public IP and a new dynamically chosen port number by the NAT device. The translation table on the NAT device keeps track of this mapping. When external traffic is received, the NAT device uses the destination port number to resolve it back to the corresponding internal private IP and port, ensuring that the data reaches the correct internal device. This mechanism is key in managing simultaneous connections and multiplexing traffic through a single public IP, especially when handling numerous devices behind a NAT gateway. Now let's dive into destination NAT. Imagine a situation where we want external users to access an internal web server with a private IP of 192.168.1.10. To make this possible, these users will connect via the public IP 200.1.1.10, which is the public facing IP of the router. DNAT is a technique that maps this external public IP to the internal private IP as packets pass through the router or firewall. Moreover, in destination at, a single public IP can manage traffic from multiple ports redirecting each to different internal devices. This flexibility allows multiple services to be hosted behind one public IP, optimizing resource use and simplifying network configurations. To configure destination at, similar to SourceNAT, we first need to specify the inside and outside interfaces. Next, we need to create access lists to specify which traffic should be permitted or denied. Subsequently, we implement destination app by mapping an inside local address and port to an outside global address and port. The inclusion of TCP indicates that this mapping is applicable specifically to TCP traffic. Moreover, the extendable keyword allows the router to create more than one static NAT entry for the same internal device without removing existing mappings. As you can see, access lists are not directly referenced in the NAT commands. Instead, access lists filter incoming traffic to permit only specified types, such as HTTP and FTP, while the NAT rules statically map traffic to the internal servers based on defined public ports. Here a question may arise. Given that destination NAT and static NAT appear similar in configuration, how does the router distinguish between them? The router distinguishes between incoming traffic and response traffic for existing sessions using a NAT translation table and connection tracking mechanisms. When traffic originates from the internal network, the router creates an entry in the NAT table which records the internal private IP, the translated public IP, and the destination IP. For response traffic, the router matches it to this entry and applies reverse NAT to forward it to the internal device. If incoming traffic does not match any existing session, it is treated as new traffic and destination at is applied if matches a configured translation. This mechanism helps the router determine whether to use destination at or static NAT, depending on whether the traffic is part of an existing session or a new connection. As you saw, the show IP NAT translations command displays the current NAT table, showing active translations between private and public IP addresses helping monitor NAT operations. The show IP NAT statistics command provides an overview of NAT performance, including total translations, hits, which indicates the number of times traffic matches an existing NAT translation entry in the NAT table, and misses, referring to the number of times incoming traffic does not match any existing NAT translation in the NAT table, offering insights into the efficiency of NAT and potential issues. In conclusion, NAT is a powerful technology that extends network reach, conserves public IP addresses, and strengthens security across various network environments. Thanks for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe for more in depth networking tutorials.